go. I'm not here, by the way, to angkat nikah for anybody. I dress like this every Friday. The only thing today, my team said, you need to look like a hipster. Okay, jeans on, sarong off. So that's what I did today. Well, let me just give you a bit of a background who I am. It says 20 years, they lie for me. It's 35 years. So anyway, um, Alan, I love the fact that Alan opened up that uh, in his speech. And um, it's easier, inshallah, for me to just go in with it. Yeah? There are two points that Alan said earlier that rings the bell with me. One, we are here to provide solution. Second, we can't be comfortable because we always need to evolve. Otherwise, there's no purpose in life. I will tell you a bit about my journey. Today, I did not put, if you can see up there, there's no title. But the title is about digital native versus digital immigrant. I'm a digital immigrant. I'm 34 years old, and I had to learn like, not like you guys. Some of, can I just see hands, yeah? How many of you had experience in dialing that phone? Saw that phone? Okay. See, about 50%, right? How many of you now just happily waking up in the morning, first thing, flip your phone, and there you go, habit, right? Boys, we miss the time nowadays to actually scratch our eyes or scratch something else. We have to pick up our phone first, correct? That's what happens. During my time, uh, by the way, I just need to acknowledge this one person. Two, by the way. I have an ex-colleague of mine from Tourism Malaysia when I started back in the 80s. Dato, stand up. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he will understand some of the story I'm going to tell you. And then my media strategy guru, I call her Mama, Margaret. And, and she, she, she always called me her toy boy, but I'm too old now to be her toy boy. When back in the 80s, when I first started working, you, I was expected by the CEO then, by 7.30, I have to have total media summary with recommendation. Seriously. And to me, every day at 7.30, no fail, because you need to look at NSD. You need to look at Brita Harian. You need to look at many print newspaper. But now, thinking 30 years after, life will be easier. Oh my God, the landscape is much bigger. Now I have to look at what's online. And then I have to understand what they say online. That's different between what's on print and on online, correct? Many of you feeling that now? Before, it's quite horizontal, right? Now it's vertical. Giler, orang kata. Kalau orang sekarang kata apa? Giler. Yeah? Because everything you need to do. So right now, that 30 years journey, if I don't evolve, becoming a digital immigrant, people my age will lose out. Yeah? But there's also a role for you guys to play the digital native. Because digital native, to you, this is, new. This is nothing, because you're born to it. I have nephew and nieces, two, three, three years old, three, two years old, three years old. For example, their mom and dad would just give them iPhone. They stay quiet. Take that away, and take Didi and friends away, and they make noises. So it, it becomes so easy, and flipping is just common. And here we are trying to teach my mom. Mom, the picture is here. Oh, I deleted it. So there's a huge gap between the, the native and the immigrants, and immigrate up and immigrants. So this is the thing that I would like very much to share with you. Because when you do marketing and marketing communication, you must be able to understand and find a balance. Yeah? Otherwise, you lose a lot of the target audiences. So that's the fear of being an effective marketeer. Would you agree that? And how many of you here still feel every day that you have to challenge and educate your bosses? Raise your hand. (laughs) 
There you go. I give you an example. Up to four years ago, if my team comes to me and says, "Russ, you need to be on Facebook," I said, "I am on Facebook. You're seeing it now. I'm an active user because I saw the power. It was the fear. Immigration to something new, or migrating to something new, it's fearful. If you look at the data, for example, the data says." It takes time. How long does it take to reach 50 million users? From the phone back then to where it is today. But if you look at YouTube, if you have an interesting content, I'm not talking about naked pictures, yeah? Interesting content. Upen and Ipen, for example, Las Copac, can gain within seven days viewers of more than how many? 10 million. Yeah? Of course, if you put Katy Perry and the rest of it, of course, they get multiple there. So this is the power of digital. I'm not here so much to talk about what Malaysia digital economy is doing, where I come from. Yeah, now uh, heading the um, uh, corporate affairs division, but just to tell you what needs to be done. Otherwise, we'll be left behind. Yeah? Medical or future taking a different role. How do we treat workers are totally different now. Have you heard of gig economy? Who has heard of gig? Okay, you, you can't raise your hand there. Cool, you have to stay down there. Okay, who has heard? Otherwise, I send a guru up to teach you. Okay, gig economy, Uber, Grab Taxi, GoGet, those are examples of grab economy or gig economy. If I intertwine to get down by some Malaysia, you are not expected to have an office. You basically almost on a part-time mode 24 hours, but you can literally make minimum maybe about 200 a day. Nowadays, millennia, believe it or not, we, uh, at MDAC, we interface with these segments almost every day. They don't want to be tied down. How many of you, if you wish, you can tell your boss, can I just work from home? Ah? Oh, your hands are going to be more than 50% here. Oh, 60% are going to be more than 50% here. So these are the, the, the type of people now we are also training at MDAC. We are trying to create new breed because we want to make them future ready. Otherwise, again, you have amazing political divide or uh, uh, what you call digital divide. Engineering, for example, and of course, how you interact with the society. I went to, I was lucky enough to visit this um, smart city in Korea called Songdu. As soon as I walked into this uh, apartment, there's a show apartment, and we opened the fridge. The fridge would tell you, hey, you need to get some eggs. If you say yes, you need to get some eggs, you just press a button, maybe about 30 minutes after, the 7-Eleven downstairs will send it out to you. So that's the power of connectivity. Yeah? And when you look at that, the essence of it, it's about, you heard of B2B, B2C, right? Everybody know that, right? Now it's B2I, business to individual, or in this case, B2H, business to household, because they will tell you what you can order quickly. There's also now, uh, they showcase also suit that they wear. The suit will tell you whether Yeah, It will tell you that your heartbeat is wrong. So this is the power of digital. So it's amazing what's out there because we, we're merely skimming. We're merely skimming, right? There are many, many other markets that has gone, for example, gig economy. UK even have their own policy now, right? Amazing. So these are Malaysia. We need to make Malaysia and Malaysian future ready and for us to not only catch up, but create our own. For example, a, uh, a strategic team member from Microsoft came the other day to the office and showed this new, what they call it, what, uh, make what's next. It's a tool for young kids 
to just select and then, for example, yeah, any youth, you can select, for example, arts and technology if I select. And it will tell me, this tool, this app, will tell me what I would be. So they are now introducing it across uh, in some, uh, what you call, uh, schools in the US to see how easy to guide. And these are the future. Digital or design economists. We have not heard that before, right? And is that a warning? Ani mesti tangan gatal nih. Anyway, so this is what you will see out there. More and more new jobs created because of this technology. More and more new jobs uh, created because of the digital divide. And we need to make ourselves ready. For marketeers, there are certain scary or even amazing things for us to look at. I, I, you know, I would love to look at it as something amazing, but if we don't prepare ourselves, it can be a bit scary. Now, let me recap, let me just bring back to you the, the concept as I was telling earlier. Nowadays, for marketing communication experts or, 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 or pro professionals, you have print, you also have digital. I ensure the fact that my team will send something out by 8.30 every day, and I usually, when I wake up, I will check my handphone. And this is tremendous different habits that I picked up now over four years ago. Dulu, kalau bangun pagi, boleh golek-golek dulu. Now there's no, the first thing I wake up is, see what's on WhatsApp, what's my CEO is expecting. Or, second thing I do, I will search MDAC on, in the news, also on the blog. One of the key things when I had to do marketing communication, I have to say this to you, I have to profess, I don't like doing communication, but it keeps haunting me. The reason why is you need to also be able to defend and anticipate issues. Dulu, you only anticipate issues on print. Now, print pun nak tengok. Broadcast pun you have to hear. Digital also, you have to be alert. So my, my, what I'm saying here is, practitioners, you can't be complacent. You can never be comfortable because you will never know when someone's gonna hit you. Even though, if you read through and you just have that sense, you say, wow, this can be an issue, even though it's online, you better raise your hand and say, CEO, potential issue. How many of you do that? Or you just say, alah, belantak lah PR yang buat. Aku social media aja. How many of you do that? Okay, so this is something that you need to be adhere of because more and more apps, more and more platform is going to come out our way. Yeah, that's going to be a lot more for you to do. Advertising, 50% said it's going to be not very important. How many of you think so? Raise your hand. You don't think, you, you think so, yeah? Okay? Now, we, we still want advertisements to still be important, right? I'll tell you why later on. Now, agency will be less important. How many people think so? Okay, that's a good number. Okay, and people would say media outlets are fading. Don't worry, we're, Ham will still be around. And we'll still be around, yeah? These are some reflection of what's out there in the market. For instance, at MDEC, believe it or not, we don't have creative agency. We don't. We do very much things in-house. We, because there's a lot of horizontal and vertical story, we are also creating soon our own editorial team so that we can use our new source to propagate, so that people come to us. Because otherwise, it's going to be very costly. Everything you have to churn out, that's costly for you to buy, costly for you to work with an agency. So we have to change, we have to alter somehow. But that doesn't mean we stay everything digital. No. Yeah? We just have to balance ourselves. Now, go back to the story that I had earlier about me being a digital immigrant. And 
uh, heavy front of this room, we're all immigrants. Some of them would not want to admit we're well, <laughs> we all immigrants. <laughs> when we had to start my day, when I had to start my day back then in the 80s, also in the 90s, uh, Dato can profess to this. Not hanta one communication, I have to line up and book the typist, kita panggil, the typing pool. From that typing pool, she or he will type out the message that you want. If you have a proposal, you have a communique, you have an IOM, she will then put it on stencil. Then she will hand it back to you in a basket. And then from there, you will take that, then you go to your fax machine. Either you fax it or you snail mail it. The total process, it takes a day. Seriously, how long does it take for you now with email? Seconds. So that's where Alan was saying earlier, convenient. And that's the thing that we had to go through every day. Just imagine if you have to do that media report every day. So the immigrants, immigrants had to do that. But the native, uh-uh. What was that phone all about? Yeah. What, was, what was that stencil about? We have never heard. So for me, when my team said, get a Facebook, get a Twitter, you should have seen the first few days, I was like, Twitter happy, you know, Facebook happy. Oh, damn, we can do this on Instagram now? Can I wear a hat? You know, because I'm not, I don't have any hair. So, so the, 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 the novelty becomes something that you embrace. Well, sometimes we realize immigrants like me, if you don't raise your hand and learn from the natives, you'll be losing out. And the natives, you have to have patience. My team has patience with me. So if your boss keeps telling you, hey, silap anta lah benda ni, or they don't know how to change their name, for example, on their Twitter handle, be patient, do it for them. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be something funny that comes out. Yeah? So how many of you now are playing that role to assist your executive? Anybody? Or your executive doesn't need help? Okay, be mindful, because you need to help out. And this is where the synergy needs to come in. Take away from this, first and foremost, lives are changing rapidly. If we don't brace ourselves and leverage on one another, the market is going to be put to waste. There need to be nice balance between traditional and non-traditional. How many of you have seen that movie, Intern? Everybody knows, right? That's my goal, by the way, to be an intern at Alibaba. No, not a joke. I was there in April and in March, and I went to see them. And I said, I would love to be here. And because they are just young kids, except for the C-suites. And then what question they asked me? Sure, Raz, you're too old. So that's the whole idea of the intern. <laughs> it's reverse, yeah? So you need to make sure there's a balance in your organization. Otherwise, you're not going to tap most of it and also connecting the dots in about staying in the game. There's a lot more dots now to connect. Dulu, as I was telling you, just print, broadcast, radio, TV. Now, you have a lot more. You need to know what people say to you on LinkedIn. You need to know what people say to you on Facebook. You need to know what people say about you on the blog. But while you're connecting the dots, you must know also when not to knee-jerk because the world at times can be very unkind. So many people say many unkind things. So remember, digital native, don't quickly jump. Digital immigrant, not to be too cool. You need to strike that balance. As a last slide from me, balance is important. You cannot go away with the traditional as I was saying earlier. 
because without that balance, it's not going to be effective. Whatever you do, because we're not there yet. We're not at, as some countries out there. We're still in a catching up mode. We're still creating our own environment. So I would love very much to suggest each and every one of you, when you step out of here, if you have not thought of this before, please, if you look at your boss and they're struggling and they're uh, an old fart like me, be kind, be gentle. And of course, bosses also, if you're slightly older and you don't know how to use stuff, you don't know how to apply digital um, marketing or social media into your life, raise your hand. Create that open communication in your organization because it will be much better for you to push your agenda. Otherwise, again, divide or digital divide or political divide in an office, not good for marketing and communication um, uh, people. So with that, I think, uh, wow, it says five minutes, it has not moved. I believe I've spoken to you. <laughs> okay, thank you.